What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic Sun video. Today I wanted to share with you guys some guild tips uh, to kind of help you guys be a better guild member. Um, in our guild we're, we run a, a pretty tight ship, um, pretty much to the point where if you're an actor for 24 hours you get the boot. If you, um, if you're, you know, lowest in contribution, under 100 contribution, buy. And obviously if you don't use your guild war attacks. Um, so with that being said, some of you guys out there uh, might be in the guild and you guys might might be wanting to perform. You might, you might want to be top contributor. Uh, you might uh, want to make it better. Um, it, the trap, I think, of being in the guild is to, is when you fall into that trap and think, uh, when you start focusing everything outwards and you start thinking, oh, if only XYZ would be better, our guild would be better. Um, but to be honest, if you focus on yourself and be the best uh, individual that you can, um, then you could be part of a good team. Okay. So uh, with that being said, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to that I want to touch on. Uh, just a couple of key things that, that we cover. Um, honestly, guys, donate your gold every day. Like the 50k gold. Plus, if you guys are aiding, you guys are sending catalysts or whatever. Um, you know, runes, whatever. You guys are assisting your your teammates. It is enough uh, to hold your guild over and get yourself into a point. Just get into the habit of doing it every day. Uh, a lot of our guild members don't do the. Um, the thingies the little orb things unless you know they're making six stars and stuff uh, but the primary thing guys is every single day donate the gold the gold really helps and understand that the gold is 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 there to help you succeed you know what i mean it's there uh to allow your your guild uh vice masters or whatever to buy the buffs every single you know eight hours or whatever so you guys can continue to farm and keep your your game going on um, but definitely do that if you guys are in a position where you have to farm like try to pay attention to your weekly missions so if you guys are out there making six stars uh, try to line up what you have to kill with your weekly so you can just knock them out you can get this free stuff here uh, so you can help your guild out um, and then as your guild continues to level up because I, I anticipate as your guild levels up especially as they they release future content um, putting yourself in a position to to really help your guild win um, is going to be very beneficial to you in the future especially with guild raids coming and them you know expanding the shop and creating uh, more opportunities uh, to spend uh, guild points and stuff like that so make sure you guys pay attention to that uh, now in terms of everything else um, everything else is pretty much going to boil down to battle um, so we're going to talk about that and really get into the nitty grit and, and give you guys some key tips here if you guys want to succeed now uh, generally speaking like the biggest issue that I that I have right now um, and I want to make this recommendation to you guys is you want to uh, pretty much try to have two combat readiness or two combat bar pushers in your team, especially if your team is not uh, to the point where um, everybody's fast and you don't really need any combat readiness increase. But until you get to the point where you don't need combat readiness increase, you want to have at least two combat readiness pushers. So like a Shiri, a Rose, a Requiem Roar, a Shadow Rose, uh, you know, basically any unit that's going to increase the combat readiness of your team uh that's going to give you turn advantage because uh, right now in the metas like if you go first pretty much you win um as as immunity slowly creeps in that's going to kind of change a little bit but not much uh but those are kind of the things that you're looking at um in terms of um you know the rest of your team compositions that's entirely up to you that's just a basic recommendation that again that i have for you guys um to help you guys if you guys aren't at aren't at the point where the rest of your teams are your know, rest of your heroes are really fast so when looking at uh, target identification, um, I say the biggest thing uh, that we're starting getting and get into now with our guild is really starting to communicate. So if you guys are in a Discord uh, with your guild or WhatsApp or whatever you guys use, um, if you guys lose to a team, like tell your guild members why you lost to a team. Okay, so uh, like for instance, like. Even if you win, I mean the information is helpful. So let's say I, you know, I fought this team here. And uh, when I look at this team composition, I'm like, okay, so Judge Kise is going to be fast, Clure is going to be fast, but if I happen to be faster than the team comp, right, uh, I can blast out this Luna because most people um, are just building Judge Kise really fast and without any regards to her damage. So I wasn't really too concerned about how much damage Judge was going to uh, put out, and fortunately I was right. Um, so we went ahead and just blew out this Luna, and then from here, um, we just had to deal with like a low damage Judge, and then obviously Clure, and then once we got rid of Judge Kise, uh, the rest of it was Rap City. Um, but that 
just because you can beat a team doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of your guildmates can. Uh, so when you come in and you you let uh, the other people know, like, hey guys, listen, that Judge Kise is about 220 speed, uh, that Cleary is about you know about the same, about 200 speed as well. Um, if you kill the Luna, and that's what I told my guild, if you kill the Luna, the team pretty much falls apart. Um, so that information that you're sharing with your teammates could help them be successful and help you overall be successful when it comes time to take the tower. Um, and that goes pretty much with any other team composition. So win or lose, uh, the information that you have, because knowledge is power, uh, the information that you have that you share with your with the members of your squad uh, can help them be successful. Now, if you guys are in a position where obviously if there's no communication in your guild, then you know tough cookie. Uh, but outside of that, if you guys have an opportunity to communicate with your guild and let them know uh, who they're up against, uh, it can be really really beneficial. Now, in terms of target acquisition, and this is kind of another thing uh, that I feel like is really really important. Uh, you have to really be able to gauge. Um, what the strength of your guild is so if your guild is able to let's say if you guys are smashing out and you guys you log in and it's your time to attack and there's three three towers down and obviously you guys are on the stronghold it's not really much you have to worry about uh but you got to be able to, to uh discern um whether or not it's better to go for havoc okay or go for tower kills so like if you're in a situation where like let's say i logged in i know most of my people are down right and then um you know it's close like this I know that obviously going for towers is probably not the most effective strategy. So I'm not going to be looking at low health towers that I could be like, oh, I can get the kill and get extra havoc. Cause, or I mean, not, uh, you know, havoc for not really havoc, but extra uh, points at the end for killing a tower. Um, but I'm also, but, but I'm more so looking at higher health, right? Because the higher health the tower is, the more havoc overall you can get. And if it's an easier win for you, um, then you could just kind of crush the tower and do what you not crush the tower, but uh, Trust the enemy that has the highest health and do what you need to do. Um, so if you're going for havoc, uh, what I recommend doing, you know, unless you're forced into a situation where all the towers are low and it's just one last attack, because um, I've been in a situation where, like, let's say I was fighting a melee gun and he only had a like a smidge of like health left, um, I killed uh, a tower like that, and even though I won both fights, I only got sixty something havoc right for the team contribution, and I was like, what? Because I was expecting the 120, but I didn't get the 120 because I didn't really do that much damage. I took the tower down, but it didn't really help me out whereas i found that if i take out full health targets especially in situations like this where the amount of havoc accumulated is going to be more beneficial than just pouncing down towers because even if i pounce down let's say bronze mirror fortress we still got to take another tower down and with our attacks being low that's not really helping us out as a team you know what i'm saying so that's kind of what i'm looking at so i would say the ability to really discern as to whether or not your team is going for havoc or if you're going for kills like tower kills and then going for the stronghold um is isn't a, a really 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 good ability to have that ability to discern whether you know what you should do and think on, on the fly uh, is going to be really really valuable to your team so i mean those are just uh you know a few things that i really wanted to cover i feel like you know you know, as we continue to grow as a guild, um, you know, we got as low as what we got as high at what 53, and then we had to do some restructuring. We had to change out some members, uh, and now we're climbing on our quest to you know be the number one guild. You know, so that means one day we're gonna have to fight ambition. Um, but these are some of the growing pains and stuff that we, we we have to go through that we're still going through as we continue to grow as a guild and these are some of the things that i would say have really helped us as a team grow so i wanted to share these with you guys so if you guys are in a guild and you're like well what do i do you know uh my, my guild leader's not really communicating but you have the opportunity to to step up you know uh i i invite you guys to really start looking at these so you guys can practice being a good individual first so you guys even if the guild that you're in right now isn't the guild that you'll end up in in two months three months six months um it will set you up so that when when you do get into a guild that you know you feel more at home in uh you can perform uh above and beyond and, and just crush the game so with that being said guys thank you guys so much for tuning in as always it's your boy Damone, and we'll see you guys on the next video peace